to repackage the shows, it takes a lot of time. Uh, at them, so every platform has specification formats. You need a team to take, like, for example, you can do, you can turn your show into TikTok quotes and take 30 seconds of each show and put them on TikTok every time and, and start generating something. Mm -hmm. But that's a lot of work for a one-man operation. I mean, so, because the whole day, I mean, you, you, it becomes like your day job, really. Yeah, for me, it is. Me, uh, the shows are, that's a job for me now. It's, I, know, I know I have to co be committed twice a week to my show. But you see, I agree with you. I, I mean, if it's a job, without a doubt, I agree with you 100%. But the thing is that uh, there is, you, 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 um, you cannot dismiss the fact that there's a certain amount of experience that you really have in the, in, in, in the, the business of just shooting images and, and recording and stuff, Cody. which is... Um, huh? No, sorry, I was talking to my sister-in-law. Mm. So um, I, 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 I do agree that it is indeed a day job. I mean, for all of us, it has... To, to who are involved in this whole thing of doing you know YouTube uh, shows etc, it, mm -hmm. it has to be committed, and that commitment is not necessarily the issue, but you know um, perfectionists like us, or at least people who just want to always bring quality to the viewers to the listeners, we yeah. always think of the best way we can bring forth the, the type of product we we bring in, um, we're putting out there. So. Of course. Obviously, you're coming for the vibe. You're coming for what Keisha speaks about on his show. For what I'm talking about on my show, we have um, we have interesting takes on different topics on the same topics. It doesn't matter. But the point is that you're obviously coming for the vibe. But yeah. now, as I'm, a I'm typically typically talking about this conversation that I had with with this TV producer was like, well, the thing is that if you do want to take the show to the next level, you already have your your identity. You have your you know, your vibe, you, you know, it's pretty, you know, open format as far as what you're talking about, but it still is very, indeed, niche. You're not trying to get out of, you know, topics you don't necessarily master. So you have already a, a certain direction about what you're doing. So mm -hmm. now you do want to make sure that the production around it, even if it doesn't have anything, this doesn't have to be anything crazy, but, you know, small details, just like we said earlier, like, for example, making sure that the background as you said, camera, you know, isolating your image so that, you know, you appear yeah. clear and the background is be blurry, you know, giving, you know, painting a nice little image and also bringing forth some dynamics. So, for example, when you're talking and you bring in like the screen and you, you know, I mean, those little things help yeah. to show that the analysis that, okay, well, if there's somebody who's stuck on your show watching the show, they're not going to get bored. Obviously, they won't get bored of what you're talking about, but eventually, visually, it might be annoying. So, you know. It really um, depends what your show is about. If your show is a podcast, unless you have like, um, unless you have a certain number of uh, of 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 people in the, in, in the show, so if you have like three guests and everybody is in the same place, that's where you need like a, a free camera or maybe to to record it in a specific studio, you know, and record your episodes uh, in mm -hmm. a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, if it Show like this, where everybody is in their their location, and you cannot really control how they will look. Uh, it comes more about the the quality of the content of True. that you will bring, like of the pe people. People, of course, they're looking at you, so of course you, you want to dress. You know, like to give you an example, I've never been a dress conscious person. I never cared about how I dress. You know, I've I've looked like. A lot of my shows for from before I was wearing blazers. Most of my show, you know, I, I kept still thinking like a hip hop, and I kept having like, you know, sneakers, jean, baggy jeans, and 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 triple XL t shirts. I was dressed very hip hop most of my career in my show. Uh, only since I started Club Shada, that I started being conscious of what I wear. Because me, I don't care. I can wear like the same five T-shirts every every week, as long as you know dress. Put them in the washing machine by the 
by the fifth day, everything goes to the washing machine and every, everything is ready to be used again. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But now that I have a show, I have to be conscious of what I wore last week, what I wore the week before, and when I'm like, oh, I wore all my stuff. I go buy mm -hmm. some new stuff just to have something different to wear on every show. Mm -hmm. So that's where it becomes very interesting in what you want to convey to the people. Those people, kids, like it just gives you a, a you see, a, 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 you, you, you conscious, conscious of that the people, if they're watching you on TV, gonna, you, have to, you also have to give them a little bit of eye candy. So of course, true. As I'm thinking about my show, I'm thinking of when I buy my next house and I'm going to have my office and I'm going to have really my place where I do the show. See what I mean? That's I'm where hundred percent. That's where I'm going to like make sure that the, 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 the place will have a dedicated place and a dedicated uh, decor just for, just for that. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? No, I understand what you mean, and that's exactly the point. So, but but until you get that, you now yeah. now the idea is this. So, for example, right, I saw when we uh, we did your show in Dakar, the production yeah. was amazing because it was very you know you just had your you know your Mac Mini, you know the mm -hmm. microphone, the yeah. iPad, and a screen. That was it, and I'm like, okay, now how about coming Fish together? Coming together with a concept that is as minimalist as that, but where the production mm -hmm. is really, really, really like super, 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 super tight. Where you know, yeah. um, when you edit a show, and that's what he was telling me, he said, you know, when you produce a show that you obviously record, you pre record it, you go into yeah. editing phase, you're mm -hmm. able to really cut to really important parts of the concessions because you can have like a whole, yes. and then you can obviously upload the whole thing afterwards. But let's say you want to really bring in a one hour, 15 minutes quality show, mm -hmm. you know, and, and three hours can be, you know, uh, condensed. Co condensed into this one hour 30 and you really can have super, super important bullet points that actually, as you just said earlier, create like this, you know, uh, little TikTok videos, etc., 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 And that, is exactly what announcers are looking for, where it's like, okay, we see that this guy or this girl, it doesn't matter, you know, that person's show is well put together. Yeah, you know, the quality of the camera could be this, could be that. But the point is, they really are really sharp with the information they're providing. They're engaging with people and, it, and you know, they're fun. And they bring a little bit of controversy. You know, and that is really something that's important. You got to have a little bit of controversy in your shows, which eventually we always end up having. <laughs> you and I, but so, it, solo wise. <laughs> it, it, I, I really believe that it depends of what you are trying to convey in your show. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I used to do a show called Inspire mm -hmm. on my YouTube mm -hmm. channel. And every video was never more than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I would record for 45 minutes and of what I wanted to say, freestyle, have my bullet points and freestyle around it. And then I would have cut, 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 cut. And at the same time, there was a lot of what I just did. When I, I stopped to think and then go, I would have to cut that. And then when I do, uh, I would cut that. And then, so... Yeah, the show looked a little more. Uh, it looked it looked definitely yeah. tight. I mean, even remember it the quality of the camera, like the background was blurred and and it's, yeah, but and, this but, but this it's a different way of producing content. Really. Yeah. yeah, so it's, 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 the thing is this: you ha you can pre you can decide to do a show where it's pre recorded like a podcast. So you have time. Let's say you record your show on uh, uh, you record your show on a Monday. And you, you release your shows on Saturdays. You record you record on the Monday, and from Monday to maybe Wednesday or Thursday, you have the time to edit it, to edit the show, also do all the 
the Instagram cuts. You also have the time to do the TikTok cuts, the, the story cuts, all these things. And then when you throw the show on, on, on the Friday, for example, mm-hmm. up, the show goes as a premiere on the Friday. And at the same time, all the different uh, parts go to all the different platforms. That's, that's a way to do a show. Now, if you want to be live, it's a it's a it's, it's not a thing. You, it has to stay organic, and you there like we now we we don't we 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 just say let's call each other and we don't know what we're gonna talk about and we just start and it and then it just goes and then from that you're gonna cut some stuff. So if you look at my channel, every time every time I finish a show, two or three days after I do three or four videos from the show taking mm-hmm. some specific moments and those ones are cut they come with a title there's a little animation said that says club shada etc etc and if i had a sponsor that's Mm -hmm. where i would put maybe a video before talking about them or maybe just their logo big brought to you by and Mm -hmm. then in the the live show i would also do that so when i sell my 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 sponsor i say listen during the whole show you're gonna have your logo here in big, uh, in the intro, and then it's gonna stay small during the whole show. We're gonna mm-hmm. talk about the product, or maybe if your product is this jacket or this T-shirt, I will wear it during the show. Or maybe mm-hmm. this cap. Maybe you have an optical. Maybe you are grand optical or something, and I can wear a different pair of glasses. Or maybe you want to put something here in the back. Maybe you. I always drink something f- during my show. Maybe you want to be one of these people that I drink during the show and I talk about it. You, like, so, and then you sell something that is different. So it really, be, it really depends what you are trying to sell to who. I don't believe that you have to turn your show into something that is sellable to TV type sponsors because those are used to a certain type of show. No, 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 but, that's not, but, but I know what you are. Uh, I expected you to go there with the, with the argument of yours, but I think that we, 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 uh, I'm with you a, a thousand percent. The point is not to go on TV. It's the TV that is at the service of the, inter- of the internet in this particular case, but you're benefiting from that perspective of a certain expertise of someone who knows sure, sure. what is needed as far as formulas to attract, an, to attract um, announcers. I Which wouldn't, is, and then not just announcers, but just to overall bring, mm. uh, bring. It's like, um, it's like for example, if you do, if you're great, I mean, you know, the, um, but for for the people watching, you may not know what we're talking about. Like, you know, you you you, you do a great song, but you don't know yeah. to, uh, you don't know how to balance and mix the elements of the song so that they blend yeah. together perfectly. You bring that song to somebody who knows how to, an engineer who knows engineer. how to do that. Yeah. In this case, we are doing all these jobs ourselves, Keisha and myself. And also we being give a big we bid a big salute to Mountain of Inspiration. Uh thank you, King. Thank you for tuning in. All the Queens and Kings tuning in right now. Thanks, so, guys. So, and everybody that didn't put a like yet. I say hi, right. but I don't hi. Thank you very much for the Kilulu. Thanks, much, John. I appreciate that. Indeed, we did a great job on that one. So for example. This, this is really just to give you a, a bit of context. It's like, yeah. not that what we're doing is not good enough. It is good, but you just, since we're perfectionists and we, we, we want to always enhance the quality of our shows. For example, remember when you and I were talking about um, quarantine grooves and we were talking about how we can change the way the animation looks when, for example, there is a donation. Yeah. And when, for example, you could have the, the, the light, the, the eyes of the mask lighting, uh, um, getting mm-hmm. lit, yeah. and having yeah. a name and the whole bar would actually appear with just like a big, like, thank you. You know, that that is exactly what we talk mm-hmm. about. These little details make a fantastic difference. Yep. So uh, it's really just having somebody who is, because this requires a little bit of technicality and, 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 and really diving into learning how to do these things, which, uh, well, let's be honest, man. We are record producers, label owners, uh, artists, you know, with our NFT stuff. We are entrepreneurs with all our other business endeavors. We have YouTube shows. Uh, man, <laughs> it's a lot to do, bro. And, I agree and, with you. Where I, do, where I agree 
is not the, not not because of that person. But where I disagree is thinking that somebody from TV who's used to do TV shows is the right person for the job. I believe that the right person for the job is somebody who's been working on shows type Joe Rogan or, or live streaming shows. They have You have now enough thousands, hundreds of thousands of live, live stream hours uh, that you have content producers who are you, content producers for live streaming. They don't come from TV. They, they are native to this platform. The, the, the mistake of a lot of people is the same mistake, for example, when you have a, an artist that is, a, say, a Kizomba or a Zook artist, for example, and they sign to a big record label. And now they, they believe that because they signed to a big record label, they have to change their music to become music uh, that sound like the big record label. They didn't sign you to sound like the other artists on their roster. They, mm -hmm. they sound on you to, to, to try something and to maybe bolster their roster. But if now you if you sound now like the rest of them, you're not, you're not of interest to them. So you, and a lot of people make that mistake. Oh, I'm a Zook artist, I signed to record label, but now I wanna be an R&B artist. And all of a sudden it doesn't work. And, and all my fans are pissed because they feel betrayed. If you are, a Zook artist and you want to sign to uh, a major, major label, you have to tell them, I don't need your expertise in terms of the music I'm going to do. I need the money and I need my music to be spread to the different places. And I need you to give me the money so my, so I can build a team that is going to work for my brand, in my places, and then make it bigger. So, if you if you if you do a show and you take somebody that is used to working on TV, what it's gonna do is gonna it's gonna tailor your show to become a show for normal TV. But if you find somebody that is already used to podcast, live streaming, but that is only if you that is only if you, that is only if you, you surrender power. Uh, yeah, of course. And surrender, you know, executive decision to somebody who yeah. who might come with that intention. The idea here is not that. The idea is obviously oh, yeah. not to change the essence. It is to enhance the actual um, uh, aspect, form, yeah. but not the actual essence. The concept of because it's not like okay, now today, you know, the show is all about like let's say you want to call the show of. Uh, Health and whatever, like you are limiting guys like us. We are, we are, you know, educated. We read all the time. We listen to podcasts all the time. We, we, we have you know, a amount of our own, and we want to talk about as many subjects as possible yeah. because that's just who we are. So obviously, yeah. you know, the idea is not so much. It's really not about changing the way it is, um, the content, but yeah. the container. Really, it really will, is. How do we make the content look a little bit more interactive, a little bit more dynamic? You know, um, and is it necessary? And, and that's why this conversation with you is interesting. It's like, okay, maybe, maybe not this time. Maybe okay, maybe get a better camera, investing in that, and you know, just overall, maybe enhancing this little aspect might be just enough. Maybe you're probably right. 